Hello, John. Hi, Dave. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm good. So, a bit of heartburn at the moment, but apart from that, I'm all right. What did you say? A little bit of heartburn right now, but apart from that, I'm okay. Okay. That's probably uh, the least uh, thing we could <clears throat> hope for in this day and age right now, right? That's it, yeah. I would tr trade a moment's freedom for a bit of heartburn. Don't mind that. Yeah, for sure. Hey, I was going to say, too, being the, uh, this is the first uh, uh, episode, I guess you would say, of this uh, show that uh, I should uh, plug and say that the theme song that everybody just heard was from John. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, so thank you. Yeah, for... it sounds, sounds awesome, doesn't it? Oh, it's, <laughs> oh yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> it's the best thing I've ever written, I think. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, you know, I'm a big fan, yeah. and so, you know, it's like uh, I was, like, blown away. I'm like, wow, that's incredible. There's a whole pantheon of your of your output is that's the best <laughs> condensed. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's like it's a, a diamond from the coal that is my uh, <laughs> output. Yeah, yeah. So uh, how? Uh, oh, and I gotta say too that uh, I just opened my first uh, my f first beer of the day. So oh, you have? I'm having um, a smoothie. Oh yeah, nothing wrong with that. Trying to stay healthy. Yeah, actually, a couple of days this week decided I was going to drink in the daytime, and it was the worst thing ever. I felt like shit. Yeah, so I'm not, I'm not doing that again. Yeah, day drinking is pretty rough, man. I, I, uh, I, I live in Minneapolis, as you know, but I, I uh, originally from uh, uh, Biloxi, Mississippi, and uh, pretty close to New Orleans. So we have a big uh, Mardi Gras culture, and you get oh, yeah. trained at a very early age to day drink and and kind of be able yeah. to handle it well. So. Yeah, I went to the supermarket, and you feel, you feel as though you, you you feel like a king now when you're allowed to buy more than two items. So, <laughs> I got like three bottles of one beer, four cans of breakfast stout. Yeah, and then I had them in the space of two days, and then the next day I got myself three bottles of really strong cider, and then, <laughs> then at the end of that day I was I felt like shit, and I thought, Jesus. I'll have to stop doing this, so I, uh, I'm not going to I'm just to knock that on the head for a little while. Yeah, yeah. So what time of day is it there? Uh, time now for me is uh, exactly 10 o'clock p.m. P.m., okay. P.m., yeah, 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 10 p.m. Yeah, there's uh, a yeah. Yeah, six-hour difference, yeah. Yeah, it's 4, four o'clock in, in the evening early evening here so you you are day drinking it's four o'clock david don't be saying it's the evening to make yourself feel better <laughs> yeah but yeah. so i'm curious like speaking of being far apart like that like what's what's the yeah. environment there like with all this shit going on right now what, what's it like for you even on a like a local street level for you like in like your your neighborhood your town or what have you uh well in my town I'm quite lucky, really, because where I live, I live on the Wirral, uh, and it's what it, what is known in geographical terms as a peninsula. So it's usually quite quiet here, anyway. Mm -hmm. it, we're not like a, we're not like a busy thoroughfare, you know. We're a small um, protrusion from the northwest of England, sort of below Liverpool, and I think because of that. The atmosphere's uh, not a whole lot different. There's less people around, for sure. And uh, the shops, is a, it's unusual going in the supermarkets now because often you'll have to queue up to get in, but it's not crazy big, long queues. Like, you might queue for a minute or two, and then you'll, have, you know, you'll be given, like, some, some gel on your hands to clean your hands, and then you go in and do your shopping. It can be a bit subdued, and I think... I personally feel a slight sense of awkwardness, you know, when you're walking around people and you notice that they're a little bit more wary of you than you would imagine uh, that, that, that is normal. Uh, that's a little bit weird. But, uh, yeah, like just less people in general, but it, it's not a ghost town. And it doesn't, it's not quite as bad as what I think some other people are finding. You know, some people who might live in a city or in a busy neighbourhood probably would notice the change more whereas here it's 
it's it's pretty quiet, you know. Like um, one end, one end of my road is on like you know the, the, a busyish street, but the other end, which is where I'm close to, it is a promenade right along the riverbank, the River Mersey. Okay. You know, it's a huge, a huge um, estuary, so it's you know a big expanse of water, and it gives you a really nice sense of space. Mm-hmm. So. When I mean, I've, I've, my girls are staying over with me at the moment, so we head down there during the daytime and go for a walk for yeah. 40 minutes up and then 40 minutes back, or, you know, I'll take the dog with me and she'll have a good run. But I do that anyway. The only difference is that you've got to kind of change your journey. You can't just get the dog and drive to your local beauty spot. Yeah, hold on one second. Sorry, isn't all that. No, yeah. yeah. A delivery or a family member. Family member. Um, my, my son, Aiden, I think, who you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Tell him I said hi. Yeah, I will. Aiden, yeah. John well, says um, hi. Hey, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. So, on a local on a local level, it's quieter, but nothing. We, we It doesn't feel too oppressive. You know, I had a few days when this kind of came about where I felt really kind of stressed about it. Yeah. Felt, felt quite exhausted and thinking about it and worrying. You know, one of my main worries was would I be able to see my children because mm. I don't live with their mum and uh, my son lives over in Formby. He's like 40 minutes away and my two That's girls well, yeah. um, live uh, 20 minutes up the road and I was worried that I wouldn't be allowed out the house. Would it, you know, would that be classed as an essential journey? Unfortunately, it is classed that way. So, there's been no change there, no interruption in, but it, there's a change in what we can do because mm. there's less attractions open. There's no play areas open. Right. Um, you're not meant to really go in the parks at the moment right. because I think a lot of the, the, the equipment there, they don't like people using in case you pass something around. But oh, sure. Yeah, so there's like things that you don't really, not, there's not, there aren't many visual like signs of, the current issues where it's more like situational stuff that you, 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 Oh, I can't go to a play area. Oh, we can't drive up to Blackpool to see Blackpool lights. Cause that's not classed as an essential trip. I can't go. I can't take the kids to see their grandparents, you know, things like that. Right. Now is that uh, because uh, things are enforced there? Like where, like if you leave your house, someone stops you, Hey, where are you going and why? Or just, it's just uh, kind of so everybody's taking it on themselves to, behave properly it's it's more so some like sort of social responsibility rather than it being enforced thankfully um i've not been um i've not been pulled over by the police and i take myself off for a little drive here if i have to go to the supermarket Mm -hmm. i'll go to the supermarket that's 10 minutes drive down the road rather than the one that's around the corner sometimes because it just makes it's just a bit of a change you know you can yeah. lose your mind a little bit like I had to buy some bedding the other day for my, for my two girls get yeah. them some more bedding for their bed and I thought well I'll go to the shop that's a bit of a drive yeah just to get out of the house a bit which is which is sad yeah. really but yeah uh, yeah it's it's a weird way to think but yeah for someone like that, I, I, I like to travel a lot and tour a lot you know and I'm traveling right. is something I've always done for a while now and it feels weird to not be able to do that right now it kind of feels like as if like a distant dream but I'm sure it'll come back before too long. Oh, I hope so. Yeah. I mean, it's obviously mm-hmm. affecting all of us. Um, you know, even, even me and my business, you know, and, you know, no, no tours, no merch, you know, so, um, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's impacting everyone, but it's not a big change for me. I mean, I spent a lot of time sitting here, you know, working 12 hour days drawing and, and, and doing that kind of thing. Anyway, I, I don't notice a ton of difference, but, I notice it from your guys' standpoint and seeing the things that you guys are having to quit, you know, cancel and having things yep. canceled on you. Yeah, like, it's it's having to cancel shows is a real wrench for me because I I love playing, you know, and it's um, you know I, I gave up a regular career <laughs> to do this. Thing. Now the source of and I, I always thought that entertainment will be there forever, and you know, in the short term, it's not so. Mm-hmm. Not being able to tour is a bit of a culture shock. Not it's it feels weird to not have a. Uh, I mean, obviously we've got shows in the calendar that haven't been cancelled yet. Um, you know, we're going to play in Brazil in um, September. We got 
um, Desert Fest in New York in the same month. So, you know, we might do some US shows. But how do we apply for our US visa when people from the UK aren't allowed in the US at the moment? Right. You know, that that's a problem. You know, what do we do about our visa? We can't apply for one right now. But you can't just apply for one the week before you come over. So if things if things all of a sudden become easier in July or whatever, then that's too late for us to apply for our US visa. So what do we do then? Right. You know, there's, there's, it's almost like you've got to write the year off in, in, in some ways. We haven't done that yet. Yeah. But, um, you know, we're in a bit of a tricky spot. Right. You know, we could apply for the visa and just hope it goes through in time. But what if it doesn't? We lost £2,000 which we can't really afford to lose at the moment because everything's quite set. So just got to kind of, I've kind of accepted that this year is going to be absolutely awful. So, and so far it's been more tolerable than that. You know, it's we've had some of our um, liberties removed for the time being, but it's at least we're healthy and I've not got sick. Right. And um, apart, my sister was ill for a little while. And, uh, but she never had a proper test. She was diagnosed as having this virus um, just okay. right over the telephone, which oh. she, she really, and um, and she's a nurse as well. So it's like, well, okay, well, if you're just going to diagnose someone over the telephone and they're a nurse, you know, yeah. like is the who, who is taking this situation seriously? I don't yeah. know. It, it's weird. Yeah, it's all very weird, yeah. So you, um, the longer you spend at home, the more paranoid you get. The more, the more interesting conspiracy theories will appeal, uh, appear to be. So I, I, I personally, I'm just trying not to. I'm trying not to read the news, and I'll just pick up the general vibe of things over time. And when this all gets better, then I, I'll. But I'm not going to allow it to. I'm not going to allow it. You know, I'll, I'll make do with what we have at the moment, and just try and be happy and then when things change again just to adapt again to that otherwise you'll you you face the prospect of losing you know a large you know relatively small but still significant part of your life mm -hmm. worrying about something that you can't change and i refuse to do that so i'm just gonna enjoy this time in enjoy the aspects of this sort of lockdown that i can enjoy you know play more computer games <laughs> spend more time Spend more time with the kids, yeah. write more songs, write more riffs. Yeah. You know, we got a new album which we're in the prep, which we're preparing at the moment. There's work that I've been doing on that's great. That, you know, just trying to tie stuff up. So for Conan, it's not been, yeah, yeah for Conan, yeah. Obviously, Ungraven have just released a live album, and um, we can't jam at the moment. We were Johnny was just about to come over. We had flights booked mm. two weekends on the trot in March to really nail down the rest of the last of the Conan album and get it ready to go in the studio with Chris. And then it, everything just tightened up there and then. So we had to, what the, one festival was cancelled that one weekend so that we couldn't play the show, but we were going to jam anyway. Then the other festival was cancelled. And then we thought, well, it's okay. We'll, you've got the flights already. Come over and jam. In the end, we Johnny decided it was... Um, going to be like a little bit ropier in Ireland and, and we, we all agreed that it would not be such a good idea so we all decided that we'd hang fire a little bit and we made the right decision because things you know it, it, just before that weekend we went into lockdown in England mm -hmm. um, so it was we, we definitely made the right choice there Johnny uh, had good foresight yeah and where is he? He's in Dublin in Ireland. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it, it doesn't it takes them half an hour to get here on the plane. Yeah. It's so 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 frustrating. Yeah. And we've just signed up for uh a, a, obviously we, we lost Skyhammer Studio when my ex wife and I sold the house. And um so Was that we didn't at your have house? like a Was that at your Say again, sorry. The sort of uh, the Skyhammer studio that was at your former house? Yeah, it was in a converted um coach house okay in the grounds you know behind the main house so we had an excellent situation there and then yeah. obviously the the, the 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 collapse of that relationship and and then selling the house was a bit of an obstacle for us practicing and whatnot but once the house was sold 
uh, we went through a little period of time where we were touring a lot, so we didn't really need a practice space. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, then we got to the point where just earlier this year, in February, I signed up for a, a really awesome like 24-7 access rehearsal room for us. Uh, and it, this place is really awesome. And um, we've had a couple of jams in there with Ungraven and we were just about to get Johnny over to, for a couple of weekends and they pulled the rug from under us. So oh, no. that's a little bit frustrating. Can't practice in there at all at the moment. But that's where I'm going to go and do my acoustic set, which I've got on my... Uh, um, I've got my, on my list of things to do is to sit down and, and record an acoustic set of Conan yeah. songs and then ah. release, release that on Facebook as, as though it's a live show. Yeah. Uh, I told you privately how excited I am about that. Like my wife, uh, Shannon and I, who, who, you know, we were talking about that. We were like, I can't, I can't imagine how that's going to sound. Uh, yeah. it's going to be pretty neat. It sounds a bit like this. Oh! <laughs> See, I've got a, an acoustic pick up now, so. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I want to do uh, Retaliator and a few of the songs that we don't normally play live. Yeah, that's fantastic. I, yeah, but I can't tune that guitar to drop F. It's 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 tuned to drop A at the moment. Oh yeah, that's what I was going to say. Is how do you handle the drop tuning? I yeah, guess. well, I mean, I, I've had that set up by my guitar tech in drop A, and it plays great. So, um, yeah, but yeah, it's uh, I've. I was going to record it here in my in my office. I might I might have to yeah make the office into like an intimate little uh, little room. But yeah, I had to wait for my I had to wait for my acoustic pickup to turn up, and that only came yesterday. So yeah, tomorrow okay. I'll get something on Facebook, you know, seeing what songs people would like to see, and then I'll do then I'll do a set. I don't think if I stream it live as I'm playing, I think that is potentially dangerous because. It could, uh, band, like my own bandwidth could interrupt the performance and stuff like that. I'd rather record it. Yeah. No, properly. I agree with you. Yeah. It's a better way to do yeah. it. Yeah. Make it something yeah. permanent and something, you know, worth its weight, you know, and, and yeah. not be hindered by it. Uh, high, qu- high, high quality audio. I'll get Chris to mix it. You know, I've got a few audio sources. Yeah. Get Chris to mix it. Get my friend, uh, Jez, who runs uh, Monster Riffage website um he, uh, so he, he's got like a youtube channel where he's ever since day one he's been recording mm-hmm. conan's shows whenever we've been in manchester or leeds and he's very supportive of all the bands yeah in the uk around here so he's uh he's cool so between those two i'll get uh, a, a video which sounds sounds good if i don't fuck up too much and it'll look cool so <laughs> yeah well but, Put that out on Facebook, like as a live show, but it, it'll be pre-recorded. Otherwise, yeah. it's too risky. I think it might just fall flat on its face. You know, if I forget some lyrics or something, I don't really want to be doing that. Yeah, no, I get that. Oh, excuse mm-hmm. me. Yeah, no, I think that's great. I appreciate the little uh, sample. Yeah, it's weird singing that song in a different key, but it kind of works. Yeah, and my voice has changed a little bit, like the last uh, year or so, last two years, really. Like I, I sing like a bit deeper now, so going going up a couple of couple of notes on the guitar sounds it it's, it's a bit of a, a bit of a challenge, but uh, but one I think I'm I've been practicing the songs in the room and it sounds cool. So yeah, yeah, I have no doubt that you've got everything figured out. So it'll be fun. Yeah, here. well, there's some songs on there that I've not played for a little while, like uh, Retaliator. You know, I played that one off the uh, Slematic Split. Yeah, I'll play that for a little while. Uh, I was toying with the idea of you know what songs do we put on there from uh, Existential Void Guardian. You know, there's some songs there which are uh, we've not really played live yet. And yeah. Some of the songs are a bit drawn out. I think it would be a bit boring if I played them on the acoustic, like Dying Giant, for example. That's like a bit. I'm not sure that would work. You know, mm. got to try and pick the songs carefully. Yeah, I think Earth and God would sound cool on acoustic guitar and stuff. So yeah, 
yeah. So I've, I've got like a long list of you know suggested tracks, and people can do a bit of a vote if enough people are interested. Then I'll pick a set list from that. Yeah, that's a great way to do it. Like fans pick, and then yep. if they're yep. picking stuff primarily that you feel like are too stretched and whatever, then you know maybe it's a fun opportunity to figure out a condensed version that suits the format. You know. Yeah. I'm not sure Crow would work on the acoustic <laughs> guitar. Yeah. Or Sea Lord. Yeah, know, yeah. Like, yeah. Anything from horseback, I think, would be. I don't know. Then again, maybe that's a fun challenge. You know, I don't know. You figure something out. Yeah, it could be. It'd be fun. Like the end of Crow was cool with a heavy riff coming like the faster bit. Yeah, yeah. I think I think the, the, the start of it where it's, it might sound a bit naff. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. So no adding any kind of like sustain or distortion or any, you're, you're going to go for a straight clean kind of keep some rules there with the, well, with the guitar. I'll, 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 I might put a boss DS one in my signal chain just for certain parts that might need a little bit more sustain. Mm -hmm. um, and I think Kirk Cobain did that when he did the, um, the Nirvana unplugged. Yeah. Like the intro to Man Who Sold the World, for example, and he had some distortion in there, which I think was a boss DS1 <laughs> or DS2. So I've got an old one of them. So I'll put that, put that on my signal chain and a tuner pedal, but I won't be using any other effects. I think that would just kind of defeat the objects. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, you're you're just being a one-man show doing the same thing. Yeah, it just sounds like, like, like a shit Conan show rather than <laughs> an acoustic show. You know, I wanted yeah. to say, I've got a buff. The acoustic pickup will go into my recording system so I can take a beat from the guitar and I've got a couple of condenser mics in the room so they can record the sort of room sound. Ambient and then ambient. Yeah, Chris can mix the two then and make it sound, yeah. you know, yeah. somewhat somewhat decent. He did a really good job with the Ungraven live album, which when it came to me from Ian at the venue uh, stuck on the name studio in Nottingham. That when he sent that over, it sounds like a typical live recording. You know, the drums sounded a bit sort of thumpy. It you know wasn't really releasable, even though it sounded okay in its raw format. But when Chris got a hold of it, he just completely changed how it sounded. It sounds awesome now. I listen to it a lot. Yeah, I'm really proud. It's good to be in. Like it's it's good that the way on Graven is gathered a little bit of momentum a little tiny bit of momentum so I'll, i'm gonna try and keep both of them going yeah that's good it's, it's yeah. nice i'm sure to have another outlet for maybe a different side of your um your um yourself to uh explore yeah. with, even though well yeah i'm like conan has um conan's gone in a certain direction but it started out as a two-piece and it, it started out, Satsumo, for example, was like, uh, I'm battling the swamp. To me, they seem like examples of how Conan, you know, we could have gone in that direction completely, but we didn't because I, 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 in amongst those songs, there was also Krull and Sea Lord. Um, we had another song on the, on the very first demo called Temple of Mew, which is like, uh, another very s slow song and um, initially that's the direction I took with Conan uh, with, with the other lads was to try and focus on being like slow mm -hmm. and I, I remember Paul when he was in the band wanted to play more upbeat stuff and I was like oh no 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 let's just play slow stuff and actually uh, Paul was right you know over time we've started to play more like uh, more like more upbeat tracks yeah. this new album's got a lot of slow stuff on it so far which is which i'm excited about but like um like ungraven i'd like to take that in a slightly different like make it less not really doom just make it more like heavy rock or metal yeah alternative so I, I don't know just make it a bit less easily identifiable mm -hmm. yeah not really trying to be anything in particular with it just just being heavy and tired as Got, yeah, got a really cool uh, drumming style, which is different to Johnny. So yeah. it, it, I can play differently when I'm playing it with him. Like we sound a bit more like a heavy Nirvana or Fudge Tunnel than we do in Conan. 
Right. I quite like that. Yeah. No, it's really cool. Mm -hmm. Whatever happened to DOS? Is that something you're still exploring with or? Uh, not at the moment, no. Um, DOS was me and uh, Joe Allen from Kurakuma. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and um, that we, we, we practiced a few times and we did record one track, which I think is on uh, iTunes, uh, Bandcamp. Um, and we both kind of wanted to do it, but it didn't really, didn't really happen. And then I made an announcement not so long ago saying Johnny had joined on drums. And really it's... Conan was too busy around then for Johnny to really, neither of us really had any time to do anything with DOS. Mm. And in actual fact, if Johnny's already in DOS, then it will just sound like a Conan, a Conan track anyway. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, because I'll play along with him in Conan in a certain way. And it's like, how can I possibly do it in a different way and in, in try and pretend it's a different band? Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't think DOS is going to go anywhere, to be honest with you. Okay. Because it's too, it's too close. To, if it's me, Johnny, it's 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 too close to Conan. And if I'm writing material for DOS, then why wouldn't I Why wouldn't I put that material out with Conan? It doesn't make sense, really. Yeah. It's a bit, it's a bit overindulgent. Yeah. It was it was good for it was good for a while. When it didn't it didn't really happen um in with that lineup and it was neither of our faults, it was just we both had busy bands, you know, Joe had Kurakuma still has. And of course I have got Conan, so it just like didn't really didn't really click with it. But somehow with with the Ungraven, um it's uh taken off like much more easily. Uh, Tyler's mad, you know. He, he drives me drives me up the wall, but I love him to bits. And uh, it's a totally different sort of person to what I'm used to practicing with. He's a he really lively, you know. Really like he's he really really. Um, he's a really uh, effervescent kind of bubbly character, <laughs> and uh, I'm not. I'm like I'm like really I'm really dry. And I, I feel like telling him to just like back off all the time, yeah. but yeah, I, I, lo I love that because it's a challenge. And uh, actually, I really enjoy spending time with him. You know, I feel like I've found someone who's different to different to the sort of musicians that I've played with up to now, but at the same time, just as much fun to play along with. Yeah, yeah. That's not. It's not. I don't think it's that easy to do. I, Actually, um, but uh, like find like being in two different bands that you both that you en that you, and you enjoy both. Yeah, I don't I, I don't think it's that easy. You know, Matt Pike's got it very good with High and Fire and Sleep, and obviously Al has got that with Om yeah. and um, and Sleep, and Jason's got it with Neurosis and Sleep. So you know, on a much 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 smaller scale, I'm enjoying a similar sort of thing. So. Well, that's really good. I, I would venture a guess that most people would say it's hard to find one band that you could uh, be, you know, very happy with and have success with or click well with the people you're with and, and, and all that yep. kind of stuff. So it's, it, and it's especially to, to keep it going for a while because so many things change in, in all of your lives mm -hmm. within the band. So to, to, to maintain a connection with them on a personal level and on a friendship level initially is important. Yeah. And then the, the, the professional stuff just kind of follows suit, you know, have you found that, on. have you found that like, uh, easy for sustaining Conan with people like rich coming and going in the band and, and things like that, where, where, you know, you kind of got maybe somebody fresh coming in and they maybe add something new or spice it up or just something you weren't expecting or just keeping the energy level up. Yeah. I mean, I've, I have, um, you know, the band has had its ups and downs, but not many downs. You yeah. know, we've 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 had uh, periods of time when you know we felt like like things need need a little bit of freshening up, and the, it, it, but it's always kind of looked after itself. You know, we've, you know, um, you know, like you just mentioned, Chris came, uh, Rich came and went to beg your pardon. Chris came into the band not a lot um, a few years ago, and he's he's still very much in the band. You know, he doesn't play every show with us because 
he has his studio career and he has a mortgage to pay and you know and he also is uh, a dad now so we've had to uh, make an adjustment there for Chris which has really worked out really well you know we got Dave Riley from Fudge Tunnel one of my favourite bands of yeah. all time so yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm made up and delighted that we can have Dave play with us sometimes yeah so but keeping you got keeping it's kind of kept itself fresh you know we've never like made we've never let anyone go or change the lineup to freshen things up at all we've you know yeah. whenever we've whenever we've been forced into a change where we felt yeah. as though we've been forced into a change it's usually just something personal rather than on a on a musical level so um yeah we've uh, we've been, been lucky though. I mean, every single person who's joined, whether they've stayed forever or not, they've been um, brilliant musicians. Yeah. And they've all added something in their time in the band. You know, everyone who's been in the band has recorded with us. Mm -hmm. um, so it's 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 an interesting when I can look back now at the at the the catalogue that we've got and see the sort of different styles that we have. Um. Like I mean, the, the the split that we did with Slomatics for me stands out as being like a real interesting little nugget in our history. Like having Dave Perry in the band, who for me was this like really like ex extremely technically gifted bass player with some ideas that I thought were just mad. And I, and I remember at the time being really reluctant to embrace his ideas because he was a way better and, and still is a way better songwriter than I ever have been or will be and I was a little bit intimidated by that and if you look at the, the, the split that we did with in, with Slomatics the first song Retaliate Peter, I, I think that's labelled as Old and Earth on the CD but that's incorrect the first song Retaliator I wrote that with Paul and you can tell because it's relatively straightforward it's like a classic conan song and then you go to the next song um um the obsidian sword if you can call it a song that was just like a bit of an idea that we all had we make a load of weird noises and yeah. dave it? we had this arp noise generator in the studio and dave just went to went to town on that yeah and, and we got like uh, dave um who uh, dave anderson who, who owned foal studio at the time he played in Hawkwind and Amondool and oh, all yeah. those side bands. He did like the vocals in the background, but we had John McNulty, who used to play bass for us <clears throat> on Wars of Battle Hammer. He wrote like this monologue. So that was like just completely like crazy. And then yeah. the song Old and Nurse. Well, Old and Nurse, one of my favorite Conan songs. And Dave Perry basically wrote all of the synth parts on that. And if you take them out of the song, it's a, just a very like meat and potatoes do metal song. Yeah. But when you put when you put in the harmonies and the chord progressions that Dave put in, it just takes it to this completely different place. And it, it fascinates me that I was even part of that. You know, being able to write that song with him, he did the most of the, he did most of the work. I remember looking at him one time and we were just working out the chord progressions, and I was thinking. What the fuck are you doing? But it sounds amazing in the end. Yeah. And yeah, uh, yeah it's. Uh, I'd love to get on stage with Dave again yeah. as a one-off show and play that song with the Moog and everything. Yeah. I think it, I think it'd be amazing. <clears throat> when we're like when we're seventy, we'll do something like that. <laughs> when we go, when when we say farewell, you know, when I'm yeah. dying of some terminal terminal illness, we'll have like the last show, yeah. say goodbye to John, with live all our yesterdays. <laughs> all right. I wanted to go back to you were talking about Obsidian Sword because like uh, that was kind of an obsession of mine for a while and like was was so was that you that actually recites all the shit that he wrote or was it him? No, the the, the, it, the it was written by John McNulty. Yeah, who um, is in um, shit? What's his band called? Well, he he, he was in Conan at the time. Yeah. Um, He's in Colt's Blood now. Colt's Blood, yeah. Um, yeah, he wrote it. But no, Dave Anderson, the owner of Foul Studio at the time, he was the person who recited okay. the monologue. Okay. 
but we had his voice going through a vocoder and all sorts, yeah. all sorts of weird, weird effects. Yeah, it it always reminded me of like in movies when they when they get on the payphone and they call the person for the ransom demands. You know, <laughs> they can yeah, yeah, yeah. meet me at the you know. Well, well, I'll, I'll send in with Unger, I mean, just to I'm, I'm not go off on a tangent for a minute. Uh, this live album that Graven have just done, I actually recorded a bonus track for that called a Pretense. And uh, I used this uh, this cool little pedal called a, um, a random tone generator. Yeah. And that, that sounds a bit like what we had on yeah. Obsidian Sword. It yeah. basically just just re- reproduces a load of bleeps and noises and more weird stuff. Hmm. Um, you can change the rate and change the the nature of the sounds that come out. And um, <clears throat> so I wrote this song called Pretense with like some like robotic voices over it. I'll send it on to you when we're done. Oh yeah, it'd be great. I always picture that you have this huge, large curio cabinet in your home somewhere that like normal people would keep. Uh, you know, memorabilia or, or, you know, fucking China or something like that. And it's just fucking pedals. It's just like, it's like, you have like a yeah, library of, of pedals. I, I should cover like a wall with, um, Velcro <laughs> and then just and then mount all of my pedals to the wall. <laughs> and run cables just, through every single one. <laughs> but, just, con- but connect, connect them all up. Yeah. Connect them all up. And then you, you can just play, uh, like have like the whole wall as a paddleboard. Yeah, yeah. Then like, my landlord would kill me if I did that. But you put a cape on it, like Rick Wakefield, and just <laughs> just millions no, of buttons. There was a guy from uh, Yes. The, oh yeah, the cape. I've, 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 I just tied you up a load more pedals today because I had a box um, in the hallway with a load of pedals from the studio. Yeah. Some that I didn't re- didn't realize I had, so I need to um, <laughs> check and make sure they're working. I've got a million and one pedals. But yeah. I, I actually, my pedal board is right here. Um, oh. yeah, that's my that's my Conan pedal board there. Wow, that's amazingly that, small compared to what I thought. Yeah, I don't have I don't have a ton of pedals. I just got my uh, mute switch for when I've got when I'm tuning. I've got this poly octave generator. That's for engraving, really, because I play through a bass amp oh. and and the guitar amp at the same time, just to get more like an octave down. That's the Boss HM2 clone reverb phaser echo. Yeah, that's that's the fuzz thrown there. That's like the small box fuzz thrown that I've got. And I was playing around with this MXR double shot distortion, but it's a bit um, it's a bit noisy for me. But, um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I went to uh, I went to a concert one time. My wife and I did, and we saw the Mars Volta. And uh, that guy um, uh, Omar, he uh, he had a pedal board, and it took two guys uh, to lug it off and on stage. They they both had it from an end, and it, and it literally was as big as my fucking desk here. And, yeah, and, uh, and, and the Dwyer, he, would, he would get on with two feet, like. And he would like, you know, he would rock stuff and and turn stuff on and off with like both feet. You know, he would like, it was just, it was, it was like, it was, it was a whole show in itself because we were up close to the stage and just right by him, and it was, it was amazing, like watching that guy just, you know, tap dancing. Yeah, yeah. So, well, you know, Alex Newport from Fudge Tunnel um, recorded the Mars Volta, I believe. Oh yeah. No, Fudge Tunnel and uh, Nail Bomb, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, and he records it at the drive in as well. Mm, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, there's a, a nice little link for you. Small world, it is a small world now, <laughs> it certainly is. It's amazing how many uh short connections there are through the, through the circuit board of life. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so true. you brought up the studio thing and you brought up Chris. I'm just kind of curious. Um, I know I'm chatting with you but i'm curious about for chris is like is he he's got a proper place to record bands still he's working out of yeah he's now got um he's now he's actually moved house with his wife sarah they've got a beautiful house in the welsh countryside um and they are not too far from foal studio which is where conan recorded um horseback battle hammer monos somatic split 
Okay. Uh, I think that was all we recorded it if I recall correctly but it's an amazing really awesome studio I mean um, the Stranglers recorded there Electric, Electric Wizard have recorded there wow. Winter Phyllis you know lots of cool it's a, a really really awesome studio in the middle of nowhere in Wales so Chris has moved there and he tracks bands there now oh, okay. and then at, at his house he's also got a mixing suite so he's got the best of both worlds but yeah, he's got a really awesome setup there, and he still uses the Skyhammer Studio name just to give a bit of continuity. Okay. And um, yeah, he's doing really well. So is it like a shared space? Because I know that was really important. It seemed like to him. I mean, and I know he's got a ton of notoriety in the community as being a, a, a fucking wizard with recording. And so I, I love the idea to think that he's still in control, or he's not just working for someone else at someone else's studio, but he's. In charge of his no, career. he's yeah, he's he's very much his own boss still. Okay, good. Um, yeah, he's he's doing great. That's he's good. doing great. I mean, I, I'm guessing at the moment things are a little quieter than normal, just because of what's happening. Because people aren't allowed to go to the studio at the moment because it's not classed as an essential journey. But he can still be mixing from home, I guess. Um, so I, but yeah, I'm I, He's uh, he's doing well. Aside from you know, not notwithstanding the current situation, right? Well, that's good. Yeah. And you've also got a couple other things you do. I know you drive for bands. Obviously, that's probably out the window. I did see yeah, the humanitarian I've, in you come out. You were you were offering to like I think deliver meals or some such thing with your driving services to make use of that. Yeah, I've not had any not had any takers for that yet, but I have signed up to be an NHS volunteer. Um, and when the girls go home on Tuesday, mm-hmm. then I'll I'll mark myself as available and see what needs to be done there. What is, um, what is that? Um, there's uh, uh, oh, there's like a call to arms really from the NHS for anyone in the community who could um, register. The- themselves as being available to to volunteer help with things like um delivering like uh, delivering drugs to pharmacies or picking someone up to go and collect a prescription taking someone home from the hospital yeah. things like that oh that's fantastic um, but i've only just had the van fixed um so i uh I haven't I haven't ticked myself off as being available yet, but I'll be, I'll do that on Tuesday when the uh, when the girls head back to their mum. Yeah, and and the record label, how's that uh, how's that going? Still generating plenty of income. It, yeah, making it, it, millions. It's good. I'm not I'm not I'm not pressing vinyl um, so much. I think I'll probably start to focus my efforts more on engraving. In terms of you know investing a lot of money into a release, mm-hmm. I had several bands where I'd released their album on vinyl and then they went bust or they didn't tour, you know things like that. I didn't really choose the bands very well. I was a little bit too generous, I think, and maybe a bit foolish, you know, with with some bands that I chose to release music for. So I've kind of pulled back from that because you know you release a, an album on vinyl and CD for a band, it's you're probably going to spend three and a half thousand pounds. Yeah. And then you've got to pay someone to promote it. Yeah. Obviously that's, you know, money worth spending. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's just not something that's on my agenda at the moment. I've, I've, I feel like I've done that for a while. Now what I'd like to do is help with the smaller bands who might want a limited one on CD and work with them in that way and then focus my investment and real keep my, Keep my energies really for promote and engraving and Conan because they're the ones that I'll get some return from. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, I've got to think like a businessman rather than a, a uh, rather than trying to be everyone's friend. Yeah, and I think that's what I'm trying to do at first. I think I'd rather just be a little bit more selfish now. Yeah, and, uh, it's so far so good. Well, it's not a bad thing, and I think anybody who's ever <laughs> attempted to do anything. Uh, and that they wanted to make money at, and, and I'm the same. You know, you you have to at some point uh, stop running a popularity contest and look at the you know the business side of things, and it just is what it is. You know, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. It is. It was fun, but you know, I'd rather 
I'd rather focus my efforts on Conan merch, for example, or Ungraven merch. Mm-hmm. You know, use my use my sort of energy to <clears throat> keep um, pushing them forward, improvising with designs, improvising with like marketing techniques, and that's all a nice challenge. Mm-hmm. And I'm enjoying that just as much. Yeah, that's great. And, you know, and it's um, I see that as being a, a, a more like because there's no competition. Yeah, you know, there's no one else selling own and merch. There's no one else selling engraving merch. So yeah. I am, I'm sort of like the world's my oyster with those two things. Yeah. Whereas if you want, if you're releasing music for other bands, you're competing with other labels, and actually most of them do a better job than I did and can do at the moment. So it's like, well, I'll just keep, I'll just uh, box clever and just keep my energy and funnel it in the in the right direction. <clears throat> right. Do you think that, um, wow, I lost my train of thought. I knew as soon as I started talking, I'm like, you've already forgotten what you were going to say. <laughs> I do that. Yeah, I, it's definitely an age thing, man. When I was uh, when I was 20 or 25, I could remember everything. Yeah. What year but this I'm- album came out, who played bass on it, who produced it. Now it's like, oh, man, it's yeah. hard. It's hard to pull all that out. Well, I'm 22 now, and I- I do that now, so I know I know how you once felt. Yes. Wait till you get up to my age, buddy. <laughs> I think I think I am not far behind you. I'm forty three. Yeah, I uh, I just turned forty seven this Wednesday. Well, there you go. We're we're the same era. We're the same yeah. generation army. So that's so we're in the same brackets on an insurance exactly. Yeah, Asian form. So yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> If we both died today, we'd be in the same graph. Yeah, we'd be in the same uh, pool. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, man. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. what do you think, man? What do you What do you think about all this shit? Do you think it's going to go away soon? Or uh, I, I'm trying hard to be optimistic about this thing, and it's not just necessarily <laughs> I want things to go back to normal, which I do, but it's more like I'm just really fearful for like. I heard on the news today that this thing, they're all saying, all the all the experts are saying that this thing's going to kind of get a little better soon, like say in the summer. But then it's going to circle around and do a 2.0, which will be even worse, like early winter or late fall. You know what I mean? It will, we'll see it circle yeah. back around again. Like, man, I can't imagine what this is going to do to the planet as, you know, yeah. economically and, and, you know, People, like if it comes around and it's even stronger, it's going to kill even more people. And it's like I, I don't yeah. know, man. I know you and I are the uh, experts on the topic, but what's your what's your thoughts, man? Um, the realist within me uh, would say that things like this actually just do happen. You know, I know that in this in the modern age and the way that people communicate it and the way in which we are open to alternative explanations um which sometimes might border on um conspiracies but if you look at it in a purely physical biological well then these things do happen and i think we're just unlucky that they're happening right now do i think it'll go away anytime so i i honestly don't know no don't know probably not because you can sort of see that we've never had anything like this before ever even with swine flu and everything else you know they were nowhere near this level of sort of like global concern you know there's so much information available now which i think is making it slightly worse it is yeah um, <clears throat> yeah and, the, and we've never had we've never had any like restrictions placed upon our movements before which is something new which is kind of like makes, makes me feel a little bit weird about it yeah uh, you know, my wife is in New Zealand, and we we we'd only just got married in January, and we applied for her visa only like eight days before the office closed, where she has to do that. Yeah. So it's like we I mean, that for me is 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 a big thing. So I hope it does calm down soon because I really want to get that resolved for obvious reasons. Yeah. And um, it's uh, like uh, so that's quite frustrating. I think. I, I think it'll, 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 yeah, who knows? I know what I hope will happen, but yeah. God knows. Well, yeah. 
I, it, it's also possible we might all be dead within a couple of years. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we might all be dead, possibly. Who yeah. knows? Who knows? Just got to just enjoy it while we're still here. Yeah. Just drink as much beer as you can. <laughs> They drink every day, yeah. and just think, just think, fuck it, who yeah. cares? Yeah. I, but what worries me is that, like, maybe, you know, the the economic sort of hit that we're taking at the moment might might be so prolonged and might become irreversible. Yeah. And you know, you we might go into like a huge recession, which may spark some kind of war that we don't kind of yeah. see. In the short term, you know, and what if what if that kicks off some like massive conflict, which further destabilizes? But that's just me being a former pot smoker who's allowing himself to be a little bit indulgent and a little bit paranoid. Mm. I, don't I think, think more, more more than likely what will happen is it will yeah maybe it'll get worse in the, in the in the winter, but we'll probably be able to cope with it better then because we'll have developed techniques for containing oh, it sure. and stuff. But and then I think, well, hold on, it's not the first virus that we've ever, I mean, flu is a virus. Yeah. So, you know, we must know how to contain a virus because they've been around forever. There are people who earn a living studying these things. So how did it get so out of hand? Like, was it done on purpose? Who knows? The mind boggles. And uh, it's hard not to get carried away with it. So what yeah. I'm actually doing is just thinking I'm like... I'm just going to look after the things that I can control, like playing Eve online, writing riffs on my guitar, making sure the kids are entertained, hanging out with the kids and talking to Sarah as often as I can and talking to doing things like this with you and just thinking, well, you know, we, we can't move the goalposts ourselves. We'll just kind of, but we'll work with what we got. Yeah. So we, you know, there's no way, I don't think it'll stay like this forever. I don't think there's some sort of hidden plan to make the world work in this way for the rest of time so i don't i don't think it's going to be i don't think it'll stay like this you know and one thing you have noticed lately in the news is like sort of like a slightly softening of the tone of the news about like in england certainly maybe not yet in america but like in like our own press is saying now oh we think maybe by easter sunday we'll have plateaued in terms of new cases <clears throat> and then hopefully then what you'll see is like a there'll be like the um the ripple effect then of so all the new cases that have been in hospital up until that point they'll either die or will recover yeah and then a few weeks after that once people have either died or recovered then you'll start you'll start to see the total amount of people in hospital drop yeah and and that will be like the tailing off of this I guess that's how it's going to go. Yeah, you know, but it just it's it's taking a lot longer, and um, it's causing more concern than, than we've ever really seen. Yeah, this is unprecedented uh, for sure. Yeah, it's hard not to it's hard not to feel worried and scared because none of us have ever dealt with anything mm. like this before. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's it's a completely new to us. It's the sort of thing you've seen. You know, you watch a movie like Contagion on the movie or Outbreak with Justin Hoffman. It's like fucking hell. Imagine if something like that happened. Yeah. And here we are. We're actually in the middle of it. You know, it's not as dramatic as that. I don't think for us, for you and I. You know, sat at home doing our doing what we're doing. But you know, the people who are working in the health services, and you know, I've got some friends who do work in the health service, and they, you know, it's absolutely a stressful situation for them because it's their job, you know, yeah. you know, they're paid to keep people alive. Yeah. My best friend from high school, he, he's in, he's in the medical profession. He, he was a nurse. Now he's more in administration, but he's still in that hospital environment, but he actually got it and dealt with it for oh, well over two weeks. You know, he's better now. He's my exact yeah. age. Um, but, um, he got through it. You know, it, it it was it was miserable fucking business. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it sounded like the most wretched fucking thing. You almost like you're hoping. For, <laughs> you had a couple of days where he was like hoping for death. I mean, it just was like it was just miserable, you know. But but he but he yeah. got through it, you know. And uh, but, you know, the uh, 
when like something I've pondered on is like, has this illness been around for longer than what people are making out? Like, was it like okay? So go back to November even. Mm-hmm. Like my Holly, my ex-wife, mother of my um, two girls, we were having a chat at, on the phone at the end of the European tour that I was on. <clears throat> and uh, we were just talking about plans for when I get home, you know, what's going to happen with the kids and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. She'd been ill for nearly three weeks with a cough that wouldn't go. And it, she she was coughing so much during our telephone call that she had to hang up twice. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I've never, she's never been ill like that before. Yeah. Around about the same time, my dad also had like a particularly bad cough which lasted for weeks. Yeah. And it's like, hmm, was, if they'd have got tested then, would, would that have been this illness that they've now right. identified? Right. Who, who knows? Yeah. You know, it's possible. It's possible. It's totally possible. Um, yeah. That's I, the thing. It's like, a, a, there's no definite, like, there's no definite, like, clear line in the sand like mm-hmm. this started exactly here mm-hmm. and it, every but and, and that's what gets on my nerves about like the um the way it's reported because there's some things that they're absolutely dead certain on mm-hmm. and you, but you can't say when things are going to be okay it's kind of like frustrating in that way but i guess we just got to trust that people are looking after us and we'll we'll be okay in the end those of us who don't get too ill yeah Exactly. Yeah, but it's 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 very stressful for everybody, you know. I'm uh, I'm lucky where I am. I get a lot of outside space, but you know, uh, I can I can imagine it being really difficult for some people. Yeah. Well, all we could do is hope for the best, man. Yeah, hope for the best. And if we if we die, die we boots on. That's what they said. Not, That's what Maiden said. Not, What's that? Yeah. We're not going to die. We'll be fine. No, we'll be fine. But, um, Fist bump. Yeah, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. And you know what? After a little while, we were like, well, we got to live yeah. through. We got to live. We, we, we were able to live through, you know, a, a unique time in history. Yeah. I and, and not to, you know, drag on that point, but like with this such a global experience, you and I being able to chat from so far away, having such a shared experience. <laughs> It's probably the first time in history that everybody on the planet, despite how old you are, what religion you are or not, and whatever, that we're all dealing with the exact same thing. We're all shut in our home all over the world. I keep yep. thinking in my mind of like, man, if this gets really bad, get on a plane and go. No, nope, can't do that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah, there's like you can't run from it. There's nowhere to go. And we're all dealing with the same thing. That's amazing, man. I don't know why I find great comfort in that, but I, but I kind of do. You know what I mean? Like not yeah. like, like oh you're 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 having a shitty time too, so I feel better. But just like it's it's like a shared experience that I think we're all getting to have. And like you know, there's I don't know, there's something comforting in some weird way about that to me. Yeah, we're all in the same boat. Mm-hmm. Nowhere yeah. to run. What's that? <laughs> I said nowhere to run. There's nowhere you can nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know. It it it'll blow over to sound very blase, and you know, but it's definitely like you know a a, a huge shock to the system. Yeah. Um, what got me was when there wasn't food available. It took me it took me about a week to toughen up to this whole situation. To be honest, for about a week or so, was we were told to like stay indoors or you're not allowed to go out now unless it's for these reasons. Yeah. It took me, I, I mean, I was already sort of, I knew it was going to happen, that restriction, but it took me about a week to sort of think, well, do you know what, fuck it, just get on with it. Don't stress about it. Yeah. Um, you kind of just become more, more comfortable, less nervous in the situation as unnerving as it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe we'll come out stronger because maybe some things will change for the better. Who knows? I, I think so. I think a lot of things are going to change. I think a lot of, you know, it's, me and my wife was saying, it's like, man, it's crazy. We saw some commercial where they're like, you can buy a car completely online, do a virtual test drive, and then some truck pulls up and dumps it into your driveway. You know what I mean? You, you don't even have to leave to go get a fucking car now, you know? And it's like, wow, they're going to give people even more 
like um, opportunities and more like uh, interest in just uh, uh, not leaving their home maybe. But I got to think, man, I don't know. I don't know if that's correct. I think when this is all over, it's going to be like this huge, massive like world party where when it's just going to go into the streets and video everybody. It's going to be like all at the same time. It's going to be like a, like a global New Year party celebration thing, you know. That would be cool. Yeah, and, <laughs> and, then, we, and then we'll all get sick. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, eventually something's going to get us sick, man. You know, but if it's not yeah, this, yeah, it'll be yeah. the, next, the next thing. True. I think it's the true. one thing that we definitely need to see get better is how we respond to these things because it's always going to be a new strain or it's going to be a new like morphing of the of the thing, you know, 2.0, 3.0, or then the new whatever it is, whatever. It's like, it, it, you know, we need to learn how to deal with a situation or a crisis like this and do a way better job of like getting right on top of it, fixing it, battling it. You yeah. know what I mean? Just the mindset of being able to do that, knowing how to do that, you know. It's the whole uh, different countries reacting in a different way. That's been the problem. Mm. I think it's like all, it's all spread in like, sorry, uh, um, what I mean is like, uh, like different countries have responded differently and, and that's caused each country like unique issues. Mm -hmm. Like my auntie and my auntie and uncle have live in Spain, and they've been on lockdown. They're, they're only allowed out the house for a very short time each day. And their lockdown is way more severe than ours. Yeah. I my brother went over there for a holiday for his fortieth birthday, and when he was in in the in in mid air, they changed the rules in Spain. So when he landed, he had to go to the apartment, and he wasn't allowed to leave apart from going to the supermarket yeah. for the entire duration of his holiday. Yeah, yeah. And then he flew home again. It's like there was like armies, an army in the streets, you know, with a with a, a loudspeaker telling people to stay indoors. It was like really insane. Whereas over here, it's been the way it's been policed has been quite soft. I think it's. it's I, don't know, I appreciate that because I mean I've got children. I don't want them like being involved in some sort of like. Uh, heavy-handed yeah being you know pulled over on the side of the road saying what are you doing i don't want the kids seeing that yeah and i'm trying to protect them from it because they're only young you know my youngest is four yeah. she wouldn't probably even remember if something like that did happen but my next child up is she's 10 mm. she's quite a sensitive little thing and i think she's uh i think that would i wouldn't want her to see that yeah. you know i'm trying to she i don't even take them in the supermarket yeah because I don't, I don't want them to feel that weird sort of atmosphere that's around at the moment. Yeah, um, I think we can be thankful we don't live in a couple of these countries. I just saw on the news today that uh, they actually have, um, like, if, if you're out, uh, you know, not conforming to the stay inside thing, they'll shoot you on sight. <laughs> that's well, heavy, dude. You know what I mean? Like That's yeah, fucked. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. We are, well, I guess we we look at in, in some ways. Then just gotta just gotta wait, make the best of it. In the meantime, we'll wait until it's all wait until it it's done. Mm -hmm. So before we close <laughs> out, with, uh, when when it's probably impossible now to say, I guess when that new Conan album is going to drop for fans like me, because you don't know when you're going to we get together and finish it and all that kind of thing. Yeah, Napalm Records have got it in their diary for release on the 17th of July. So I would be surprised if we were able to meet that. Because right, right now we don't know when but we can get all together in the studio. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, once we get together in the studio, we'll get finished off very quickly. Because, mm -hmm. like, it's a, I, I feel like, you know, when you haven't had sex for weeks, and then that first time it takes about five seconds <laughs> Well, I think, I think, I mean, not for me, but for some of the no, men. Not say, true, yeah. But like, yeah, you know, I've heard these stories. But uh, that's what, that's what the album will be like. We'll, we will uh, ejaculate the album out in record time once we're allowed to. But until then, we'll just have to, we've got the, I've got like the, the musical version of Blue Balls. Yeah. Yeah. I could get, totally get that, man. Well, yeah. Hopefully everything will get back to normal, and we'll get it. We'll get a. We'll get everything going back to normal. But. We will. Time will tell. Yeah. All right, buddy. Well, I appreciate you taking time to chat, man. It's good to see your right. face. This is one good thing about it. It's been 
one to uh, connect with old friends. That's kind of what started this whole thing. It's like, just like, God, you know, I'm stuck in here. I can't see people even down the street and friends around yeah. the neighborhood. So might as well call some good friends and chat. So Yeah, definitely. That's been nice talking to you always. Yeah, always with you too, man. And I hope things get yeah. better. And I hope keep keep good care of those little ones. I know you do, man. And keep them keep them safe. And right. yeah, yeah, they're doing well. They're doing well. All right. And we had we had burgers for tea, homemade. So right. they're, they're getting they're getting well looked after. Yeah, that's good. All right, buddy. Well, we'll see you next time. Yeah, see you soon, mate. Bye bye. See ya. Bye.